What's up guys, Justin Grunel here. Welcome to 65 Drums. Today I'm gonna to show you how to get the best trigger response out of your drum pads by explaining all of the trigger tools within your drum module. Not every drum module will have all the tools I'm about to mention. Cheaper drum modules may not have very many. More expensive drum modules like a TD30, TD50, or higher end Yamaha drum modules, they'll have more of these tools I'm gonna to mention. Believe it or not, it is kind of a complex thing to hit a drum pad and hear a sound coming out of your headphones. A lot goes on in between that split second when you hit the drum and you hear a sound. So these are tools to help make that even better. Before I go into all this, I need to explain some very you know ground level stuff. Right here is a piezo. This is what powers all of your drums. This is what is inside every tom, every snare, um, every kick drum you've ever played, and every cymbal you've ever used as well. So basically this is a sensor that determines how hard you hit the drum pad. It's resting underneath your mesh head and a foam cone is sitting on top of this. This is what powers your drums. And so let me explain the first term, sensitivity. When you increase the sensitivity, you're basically um, letting your drum module pay more attention to the signals coming from this sensor. Your drum module reads the electric charge like a waveform, okay? Sort of like a sound wave. Because this is kind of sort of like a microphone. And so by reading the waveform, the drum module tries to determine how many times you hit the drum and how hard you hit the drum. So if there's a giant spike in the waveform, um, your drum module will assume that you hit the drum very, very hard. However, a lot of things can go wrong with uh, the drum module trying to read the waveforms of the electric charge that this sends out. So all these tools are here to prevent any sort of mistriggering, and that's what most of them are there for. So if I hit this very, very quietly, but I want it to be very, very loud, basically I'll just turn up the sensitivity of this pad and the drum module will act as if I'd hit it hard. Or if I'm a hard hitter and I wanna be able to hear some more minute details in my playing style, I can turn down the sensitivity. So the next tool in your drum module is called Threshold. Threshold gives you the ability to tell the drum module, ignore all of my drum hits until I start hitting this hard. Ignore all the softer ones, only uh, listen to the hits that are this hard. You can, of course, you can turn that up or down. Adjusting the threshold settings is a great way to avoid double triggering. Because what happens, especially with like acoustic drum heads, and if you're using like a D-drum acoustic trigger, uh, there's a resonance that happens after you hit the drum head. You know, the, the drum head vibrates a little bit after you hit it. And the drum module can interpret that vibration of the aftershock of your hit as another drum hit. And depending on how sensitive you've set your module, um, the drum module might assume that that slight vibration after your drum hit is an extra hit when it really isn't. It's just the aftershock of your first hit. So by adjusting the threshold, you're telling the drum module to ignore all drum hits that are softer than that hit. So it should eliminate at least some of that double triggering. The next tool is called scan time. So if you've ever had trouble with hitting your drum head with the same force multiple times, but you're getting different volumes coming back at you through your headphones, by adjusting the scan time, you can make it so all hits of the same force are coming back at you at the same volume after your drum module produces the drum sound of the snare or whatever pad it is. According to Roland, scan time, uh, specifies the detection time for the trigger signal. So it's a really, really helpful tool if you're struggling with that problem. Another tool that some drum modules have is called re-trigger cancel. Uh, this is yet another way to avoid double triggering. So again, when you hit the drum pad and there's that slight aftershock, um, the waveform that it generates that the, your drum module will read is slightly different than the waveform generated by the first hit. So the first hit might be a spike, and the aftershock might be this slightly lower spike that looks a little bit different. By adjusting the retrigger cancel, basically your, your drum module is scanning the waveform to see and try to detect which is the actual hit and which is the aftershock of that original hit. So by increasing it or decreasing it, you can help avoid double triggering. Really, really nice feature if your drum module has that. All right, so this next tool in your drum module is a big one. This is called crosstalk cancel. So if you've ever had this problem, and I know a lot of people have, where you hit your cymbal and somehow your snare thinks that it registered a hit, that's because there's crosstalk. The reason why this happens in the first place is because electronic drums are all mounted on a drum rack. This drum rack just connects like almost every single piece of your drum set. So if I wiggle this, this drum right here, it'll wiggle the cymbal as well. So 
When you hit this with force, the force also travels down the drum rack and reaches every single pad. So by adjusting crosstalk, you can eliminate that triggering of multiple pads at the same time. One more control I wanna talk about is called the velocity control. It has a bunch of different names depending on what module or what drone software you're using. But basically there are two different kinds of volume. If I recorded this, this djembe as a sample, I would have sounds that are quiet and, and I would also have sounds that are very loud. And so uh, when I play those back within the drum module, I can make that loud sound to be physically quieter. It would have a lower decibel, um, but it would still be a loud version. It would just be quieter, okay? So this is where velocity um, controls come in on your drum module. You can tell your drum module um, that maybe you're a quiet hitter. You can tell your drum module that you want even your softer hits to be loud. This is not the same as adjusting the sensitivity. This is just adjusting the overall volume of the sound coming out. So even when you hit quietly, if you're like a soft hitter, this is a great adjustment to do. Even if you hit quietly, you can tell the drum module, I want the volume of the sound to be up. I don't want you to play a loud version of the sound. I just want the overall volume of that quiet sound to be louder. So you can adjust the velocity curve. Um, there's, there's a bunch of different uh, templates to adjust all of this. So when you're bumping around in your drum module and you see like log one, log two, linear curve, those are all different templates on how you want your drum module to react to your playing style. But that's what the velocity control is. Another setting I wanna talk about is called rim gain. So drums are powered by these, like I said earlier. However, um, depending on what kind of drum you have, they usually have multiples of these. So you'll have one piezo in the center or near the edge, and then the second piezo will be somewhere on the shell, so it detects rim. So those two together um, power your drum pads and also your cymbals. However, you can adjust how sensitive the rim piezo is by adjusting the rim gain. This also goes for cymbals as well. If you want the edge of your cymbal to become a little more, um, a, a little more sensitive to hits. So the last tool I wanna explain in your drum module is called mask time. Mask time is similar to threshold in the fact that they're trying to solve the same problem. Um, they're both trying to solve double triggering. So threshold just tells the drum pad to ignore any of my hits until I hit it at a certain velocity. What mask time does is tells the drum module to ignore any drum hits after the first one for a certain length of time. So let's say I'm hitting a kick pad. And if you're an acoustic drummer and you're switching to electronic drums, you probably like to bury the beater against the kick drum head. And maybe you even let it sit there against the kick drum head. And what happens is after you initially hit your kick drum and you bury the beater into the drum head, you will get that first loud sound but your kick drum beater will actually slightly lift off the, the kick drum head and go back down. It's almost imperceivable. But your drum module is very, very sensitive. So even though that second trigger was pretty quiet, um, what happens is your drum module says, oh, he hit it twice, so let's trigger two drum sounds right next to each other. So it's almost like this flam sound that comes out. The way you can fix that is adjusting the mask time. So you can tell your kick drum or whatever pad um, after he hits it, wait two milliseconds before allowing another uh, a kick trigger to register. And that's really, really useful. You can adjust the time. Now you're gonna have to be careful with this because if you do a lot of really, really fast double kick pedal playing, then you wanna make sure the math time isn't a long length of time. Because if you're playing really, really fast, um, your, your drum module may only register half the hits. However, if you adjust it to the right length of time, you can eliminate double triggering because you're telling your drum module to ignore the second hit that comes after the one you were wanting to hear. All right, so I haven't explained every single tool within drum modules to adjust trigger settings, but this is a really big slice of all the tools available. Cheaper drum modules won't have a lot of these features, but then more expensive drum modules, they'll have most, if not all, of these trigger features. Most drum module manufacturers like Roland, Alesis, Yamaha, they'll try to set everything up so it'll be as natural as possible out of the box. But if it doesn't quite fit you and your playing style, or if the drum manufacturer didn't put enough time to dial in the settings correctly, 
then you might have to go in the drum module and adjust different uh, trigger settings like that. If you've already forgotten half of the terms I described, I'm actually gonna leave a whole page of info in the description below where I explain each term and what it does. So if you wanna go check out the description, if you forget uh, what different terms mean and you don't have to keep watching the same video over and over again, go check out the description below. Uh, be sure to subscribe, I'm always coming out with new electronic drum videos around two times a week right now. And also I'm on Facebook and Instagram. See you next video.